The landing page report is an extremely useful report in Google Analytics 4 as it can tell you where your users start their journey on your site. This means you can prioritize pages that get most traffic and see what pages bring you the most revenue. And in this non-techy beginner tutorial, I'll explain how to read this report and get insights from it. <laughs> Hello data people, my name is Robert and I'm here to help you to understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. Let's take a look at the landing page report. So this is the landing page report and you can get there by clicking on this reports and then you have engagement and landing page. So let me just hide this part so you ha we have a bit more of screen size. You have this graph and it's uh, sometimes useful to see if some of the pages have peaked a lot. So for example here we can see for some reason, this page got a lot of traffic during this day. These actually three days in a row. But the main part of this report is here below. These are the pages that are visited the most. First things first, sometimes you need to change dates. So right now I have June 1st to June 30th. But if you click here, you can actually adjust that. You could look at one of the presets, let's say last 30 days. And then if you hit apply, it will change that data and reflect the dates. You can see here, for example, we had some crazy spike on one page uh, just yesterday. Also here where the dates are, you can compare dates to each other. So let's say I'm going to first select June, the whole month of June. Then I'm going to click on this toggle. And now this yellow part, if I click on this number under compare and it becomes yellow. I can now choose 1st of May until 30th of May. And if I hit apply, it's going to compare now those dates. You don't see that in this graph, but you do see it here in the table. So it's quite clearly here. And you can compare how your pages are doing if you compare one uh, month to another or one week to another. Super useful in that sense. Let me just remove the comparison because it's not needed right now. Then let me show you some other features here. Let's say this is a bit messy right now. And I would like to just look at this page. I can now select it, just copy this. I come into the search box here paste it in. I have a space there, so I need to remove it. And then I hit on enter on my keyboard. Now it basically just filters out all the pages that don't have this, this part. Now there's quite a lot of these pages still, but that's all right. You can filter by adding the keyboard here. Then you have the secondary dimension. If you click on this plus icon, you're able to search, for example, for device type. And this, if you select device category, You'll notice now you have secondary dimension and you see which users came on mobile and which on desktop. Okay, so that's the basic features. So let me remove these so we can just dive into the metrics. Next, let's talk about the metrics. So we have metrics here and then this is the dimension. In metrics, we have sessions and users and they're quite close to each other. But basically, when you come to a page, you become one user and that's your first session. But let's say you come also tomorrow and the day after. You're still counted as one user, but you just had three sessions. So in theory, you should be always one user and then you have multiple, even hundreds of sessions. Practically, this doesn't happen because the user metric is kind of starting to be unusable because it relies on a technology called the browser cookies. And most browsers are kind of starting to block that technology. So it's not as reliable as it used to be. I like to use sessions in my reports, but in any case, you need to just understand what this means. And then you have new users, which just means that this is your first session as a user. So uh, it just tries to count that part, but you can see for many pages on this website, most people are new users. This is an interesting one. If you are engaged session, and this just calculates how long you spend on the page. An engaged session just means that you've been on the website more than 10 seconds, or you had a conversion, or you had uh, viewed two pages or more. And this starts counting that on the page. So this is like a timer. You also has engagement rate, which is really useful, but you don't see it by default here. You need to add it later. I'll show you how to add metrics to, to this report in just a second. Then we have conversions. Right now, I've selected purchase. That's not so useful if it's all events because you want to look at specific conversions. So in, for e-commerce, it's purchase, obviously. So this just tells you how many purchases there were. And then you have total revenue, which kind of explains itself. Now with total revenue, it just means that this page contributed to this number. It doesn't mean it it's the only source of this number, if that makes sense. So it might be that people started from this page, but they saw many pages after that 
and you know maybe not this page actually convince them to buy but some other page it's nice to compare pages to each other because then it's a bit more relevant now a second ago i mentioned that you can also add more metrics here so you can do it from here you should see an icon but i don't have the rights in this view but on my website i'm able to update it so you see here customize report i can now click on it and now it'll open up a menu where I can where i can add more dimensions or more metrics if i click on metrics you can see that there's or these are what I already have. And then from here, I can search for something else. So for example, let's say engage session per user. So if I wanted that, I can add it there. And if I wanted to uh, move it somewhere, I can just click on the six dots and drag this one wherever I want to see it. So then if I hit on apply and save the changes. And if I go back, this is how you can make landing page report uh, relevant to your job and to your tasks. One more thing here, if you want to sort something in this table, all you need to do is hover over any of these metrics. If you click on this arrow, it will sort by that metric. It doesn't change right now, but if I click on it again, you'll see that it sorts the other way around. So now it's from the least to most. That's not very helpful. So I'm gonna sort by sessions and I'm gonna keep it that way. By the way, data is not created equal and you should be only looking at data that is relevant to your role. That's why I've created a cheat sheet which shows you the most important metrics and KPIs specific to different e-commerce roles. You can download it by clicking on the first link in the video description. So next, let's take a look at three methods you can use this data from this report and get insights and improve your website by doing it. Now let's take a look at the first insight here. So if I scroll down, I like to just look at, at the pages that we see here. Is there anything surprising? Is there some pages that are kind of popping that they just have a lot of traffic? For me, I immediately noticed there's no homepage here. Now, it's to some, it might be surprising. Actually, a homepage is not always the most visited page. Usually some other pages are more visited just because homepage is so generic. And if you send traffic from, for example, ads, they usually go to a specific page. And this basically tells me what pages I can prioritize because if traffic is already there, maybe I can convert them to customers. The second insights I usually get from this report is by looking the engagement rate or average engagement time per session. So in this case, we don't see engagement rate. So let's look at this. Okay, this one, I think something's just wrong there, but look at this. Why is this 10 seconds? That That's kind of strange. If I compare it to the others here, we have 10, uh, these are one minute and one minute, then we have some two, uh, two plus minutes. So this really stands out. So what's going on here? Now, let me grab this. Again, I wanna filter. I wanna just look at this page. And then we have stationary. Okay, let's add a secondary dimension. So maybe let, let's look at the source. So where did people come from to this page? So session source and medium. Now we can see, oh, okay. Most people actually came through a paid ads. And so whatever ad campaign this is, it's not working. I mean, seven seconds and zero revenue. I would need to take this and show it to my online marketing team, to the people that are responsible for the ads, or if I'm responsible, then I would just go and look in Google ads, what's going on. So maybe I'm sending the traffic to wrong page or something else is going wrong because this is just a mismatch. The other metrics, okay, direct, organic. We can see that some direct ones are actually performing quite okay. So when people arrive to notebooks, it seems to work quite well, but these two is just something is going wrong. And you can see how easily you can start getting insights just by looking at these reports and filtering and just breaking down it a little bit. You could also check this on different devices. So if I type in device, device category, let's see if there's anything weird. So mobile, oh yeah. So if I look at mobile, we have zero revenue here. Desktop as well. But here on desktop, we have more than $2,000. So clearly the traffic on desktop is converting better. Maybe that's because it's Google employees who's, who actually buy this stuff because it's a merch shop. But in any case, this just gives you more insights about this page. The third insight that I usually like to look in this report is for those micro conversions because these are landing pages. And of course, as an e-commerce shop, I would like to have a purchase, but Many times it's just not possible. So then we have some other micro conversions like getting the person's email address, or maybe we want people to go to the next page or view the new product we just launched. So from here, if I click, I could now select some other event 
for example, let's pretend that membership is a, we have a membership program and we want people to sign up. Let's pretend that this one had a lot of membership signups. We could go on that page and see why is it performing so well and why is it getting so many membership signups? You could learn from that page and try to replicate it elsewhere. And sometimes to learn that you, you cannot just rely on GA's insights, uh, but you actually also need behavioral analytics software. Sounds fancy, but it's just heat maps and session recordings to see exactly which elements of your landing pages are successfully engaging visitors. So with uh, heat maps, you will see where people click on the page. And with the session recordings, you will see what they do on the page. You actually can follow along their mouse and what they do on the page. Where do they scroll? And that just gives you so much more visibility what people do on your landing page. There's another report that I've started using recently that's had an even bigger impact on my ability to see what users do after the landing page. So check out this deep dive tutorial where I'll show you what it is and how you can use this interactive report in GA4.